it's time for a new release of Home Assistant, and we will be looking at what's new in 2022.11 release. And don't forget, this week or for this release, there will be no release party. So stick around and let's see what's new in this release. As I mentioned, this release will not have a release party, but instead of that we will be having State of the Open House, which is a yearly event organized by Nabokaza and Home Assistant Devs, where we will be talking about what's new in not just this release, but overall in a Home Assistant community and what are some of the things that you may expect, what are some of the trends, ins and outs. So don't forget to click on the Notify Me. And of course, when the Steam starts, don't forget to hit the like button. The link to this event will be down in the video description. But we are here today to talk about what's new in the November release of Home Assistant. This video has been recorded on the Beta 5, which is of course the latest release of beta version at the time of the recording. And as the new release will be released tomorrow, I don't think that there may be that much surprises. So let's check what's new in this release. In my opinion, this release brings a lot of things for the UI or the user interface. Let's look at a couple of them. First is the tile card, which is something that looks very similar to the mushroom cards, and also the statistic card. Statistic card may seem similar to the entity card, but it's not. Let's jump into my recording setup and look what are the differences and what you can do with them. As you can see, the tile cards look very similar to the mushroom or mushroom cards. You can click on them, you can see here more information, you can toggle, in this example, the LED or WLED strip, and control other things such as brightness, color, or effects. But one additional thing, you can specify what happens if you click on the icon. In my example, I have selected this to be toggle. So in my case, I can turn on and off the light by just toggling it via this icon here. This one is the climate card, also using the tile card. If I click on it, I will receive more information about this climate device. If I select it here, I can toggle it, in this case turn it off or start to heat. But I don't want this to heat, I want this to be set to auto. Let's look at what the cards look like under the hood. Each tile card has ability to select one entity. Then you have option to set up appearance. Here you can type in the name, and this name will override the entity name. You can change the icon, you can select a different color, but I prefer this default color or state color, because by using that one I know if the light is turned on or off. And also you can use show entity. Show entity can be great if, for example, this is a camera. If we turn this on, we can see the image from the camera here. But the next or more important thing is what you can do with the actions. Actions allow us to specify what will be the tap action, if you tap somewhere here, or the icon tap action. Both of these actions allow us to select default action, more information, toggle, navigate, URL, call to service, or no action. I really do believe that adding this tile card in Home Assistant can improve your overall UI, and I think that it is going towards more fresh or new look for the UI in the future. While we are already here, let's see this statistic card. Don't confuse this statistic card with this one that is called statistic graph card. Statistic graph card is used to show you the statistic information over a prolonged period of time. Statistic card can give you glance of a specific state of the entity. I have here a couple of them. For example, I have dark sky temperature 14 degrees, 9 degrees, 20 degrees. So what's the difference? If we look at this 14 degrees, this is the mean value for this sensor for the period of one month. I can select and choose minimum, which is that 9.4, which we saw previously, maximum, and some of the entities also support this change. Bar light energy can show you the change of this device. I think that this is from the first of the month. And since today is first of November, we have 0.04 kilowatt hours change for this month. I'm not sure that you will be using all 
four cards at the same time to show you the mean, maximum, minimum and change value. But there may be some cases where you want to use, for example, minimum value. Minimum value for the outside temperature can give you information, for example, what is the minimum night temperature outside and if you have to cover your plants or get them inside. While we are already talking about the changes in UI, let me show you something else. This can also be done through the UI, but I will do it this way here. If we look, for example, at this device, Kitchen Humidity, and go to Information, we see here that we now have minimum, mean and maximum value for devices that support long-term statistics. Let me disable all of them and slowly add one by one so that you see that there is a difference. There is not a big difference, but this graph for the history now allows you to see at a glance what was the mean, maximum and minimum value. This was the minimum, this was the maximum and this is the mean value. I know the difference between the minimum and maximum values and mean value here are not a big one, but you can see in the graph those values here. What it really does for each of the entities that has long-term statistics, it gives you information about the minimum and maximum values in the entity card now. Let's look at two more changes. First, if we click our name here, we now have option to select the first day of the week. Automatically, it uses the language settings, but if you want to override, you can select Monday, Saturday or Sunday. Unfortunately, yeah, although we would like to have a three workday week where we end on Wednesday, this is still not supported in a Home Assistant. And one additional change that can make your system look nicer is changes to the automations and also devices. If we click on Settings, Integration, and in the devices list, devices now have icons and those icons are pulled from the integrations. So these are the iBeam integrations. We had MQTT, AccuWeather, ESP Home, Alarmo and much, much more. But these icons are pulled from the integrations themselves. But for the automations, you have option to customize default icons. How to do that? Click on the automation you want to customize, click on three dots, click on information and in the settings select icon, boxing glove, update and this automation will now have this icon. Hopefully in the future we will also get the ability to sort or group automations as there was a lot of the requests around that in the what the heck month. My energy tab in a Home Assistant recording setup, yeah, unfortunately I never finished it. But what is new? If you go to dashboards, energy, we are now able to, besides electric grid, solar panels, batteries and gas, also add water consumption. Click on add water source. Yeah, but you also have to have device that reports the water usage. You can track the cost, use the entity to track the total cost, use entity with the current price or use static price. In terms of what integrations are supported at this point, we have Flow, Plume, Home Wizard Energy, P1 Monitor, Tune. But of course, you can also pull the water usage data if you have it already in the MQTT or use ESP Home. The version of the ESP Home has to be 2022.10.1. There was a lot of discussion on how Home Assistant is managed as a system. Some of the people don't like that we get so many updates. Others are wondering why so many things are included in the base of Home Assistant. And others are wondering why we also do not have whole of the HACS inside Home Assistant. But one of the things that this release brings is the ability to reload automations and scripts, but not all of them, just the ones that have been changed. So for example, if I am to edit this automation here, change the value, press save. What previously I had to do is go to developer tools, check configuration because this is something that you are supposed to do and I do recommend that you do and click on automations. And when we click the automations, the system would dump current automations and reload all of the automations. 
Maybe you didn't have issues with that, but for example, if you had currently running automation that had some wait period, it would be cancelled and that automation would either never finish or never start. In this case, we are just reloading only those automations or scripts that have changed. So if you have 250 automations, changed only one, only that one automation will reload. In terms of time and reloading, it's not that easy. Home Assistant still has to load everything up and check what changed. But only those things that changed will be really reloaded. So the time of the automations or scripts uh, reload will probably be the same. While on the other hand, if you had any scripts automations running and those scripts automations haven't changed, those would still continue to run. And the last thing that I wanted to point out in this video, but we will also be looking briefly at other changes. The last thing is the lights. If you've seen a couple of my videos, I talked about the X, Y or Mirad values, Mirad values. The question that a lot of people had was why the Home Assistant doesn't use Kelvins. So now, yes, you can use Kelvins to control the light or to control the temperature of the lights. If you are now creating automations with the actions to turn on or change the LED or some light that supports it, of course, you had previously option to control the color temperature in the Myrets, but now you have option to control it in Kelvin. And I know that a lot of people like Kelvins more, from the cold lights to the warm lights. But this is not a breaking change, so if you are using Myrids, you can continue using Myrids, but in the future create new automations or new scripts or service calls that will be using Kelvin. Some of the other things that I didn't cover in this video. There are some changes to the template features. The state attribute and states function can now also be used as a filter, and the isState and isState attribute function can be used as a test. The average function now accepts the default value, but there are also a ton of other noteworthy changes. The list is very long, so I will not be going through all of them. The new integration that has been added is AirThings BLE, the Oral-B and the Snooze. One new integration is available for the configuration from the UI. And there are some breaking changes. I read all the breaking changes. Some breaking changes may break your system, while others are more of information. Units, for example, RPMs, are now using the lower case letters. If you already have uppercase RPMs, they will be internally in database converted, but please in future use lower case. Do you remember when I started the video that the latest release of Home Assistant was 2022.11.0 beta 5? Well, actually, at the time of the recording of this video, beta 6 was released. Before we end up this video, I really would like to thank everybody who is supporting me and has become my YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below, subscribing to the channel or watching and liking my videos. Don't forget that I also have a merchandise store and the link to the merchandise store and also the links to the Discord server, Twitter account and Instagram are also down in the video description. Until the next time, bye bye and have fun.